The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour. As always, we come to you at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So we've got some shenanigans, some hoot nannies going on in the market. Of course, uh, China had been off all week uh, for their national vacation. They're coming back this morning. And, of course, when they come back, it's Columbus Day here in the United States. There are two days where the bond market is always closed, why the equity market is open. Uh, that is the 10th of October and the 11th of November, uh, Veterans Day and Columbus Day for the bond market. And uh, you generally have about half the volume you have on a normal day. I suspect that uh, a lot of what happened today is uh, a little bit uh, well, too well-timed uh, to maybe wash out the bottom of the market. We'll see whether we get a close below 30, uh, above 3636 on the S&P cash. If we do do that, I think that's a fairly good sign. If we continue to have light volume, um, we could just chip away at the bottom. So uh, today's a, kind of an important close, uh, but uh, not as probably important as the one tomorrow when we get back to, first, uh, to a full trading. Of course, uh, when we look at things like the TLT, you go, Eek, but then you have to know that the bond market itself is closed. So, um, you know, we did break through that previous low. I'm wondering if that lasts through tomorrow. But uh, I don't think we have a lot of time to wait. Uh, about a day, maybe two. Uh, of course, uh, Wednesday this week is Delta Neutral Day for uh, monthly options expiration. Uh, I tend to get a lot more out of uh the data then, uh, but right now uh, S and P or X, excuse me, the uh, SPY showing an expiration uh, on the 21st somewhere around 380 on the spies. So again, not tremendously bearish out there. Thursday we have earnings. Wednesday we have uh, some Fed minutes at two. Uh, other things going on that uh, people probably haven't been looking at or thinking about with all the other. Uh, stuff going on today is the Supreme Court took up two cases from the Ninth Circuit uh, that are going to touch on Section 230. Uh, that is the exemption for uh, social media companies uh, to not have to get uh, sued for what uh, other independent individuals put on their website. Um, the Ninth Circuit has uh, adopted that uh, to be incredibly wide that they can't be sued for anything, uh, which is not what the uh, bill says. It says they can't be sued for things, other things that people put on their site. So my guess is this is the uh, case. Uh, as I said, uh, you've got two that are being consolidated. Uh, the uh, other two from the Fifth Circuit and the Eleventh Circuit, my guess, are going to be enjoined. I didn't think maybe this would come until... Uh, after the first of the year. So that uh, figure probably less than nine months. So that means that we could have fairly uh, a fairly good decision by May of next year, if not sooner, depending on how this goes. Uh, and, uh, well, you've got uh, both sides of uh, the Supreme Court from uh, Kagan and uh, the uh, traditional uh, right also uh, saying that uh, this needs uh, a lot of clarification. So probably, if you had to guess now, probably a 7-2 uh, decision when this does come out and that they're hearing it, eh, probably a good indication that they are uh, uh, going to do something with it. and. Most of them have already said they were going to, how they kind of felt about it. So uh, social media companies, I think, would be much better off uh, not trying to uh, 
uh, censor uh, independent First Amendment speech and uh, start getting on to some of the other stuff where they may make some money. Uh, other notes of interest, uh, uh, I was uh, talking to somebody earlier today, one of my subscribers, and I wondered whether the giant, uh, Jamie Dimon uh, Pearl Harbor event at 1030 this morning uh, where he came on and said it was the end of the world. And then, of course, you get into it a little bit farther and he goes, it may be the end of the world. Well, if it may be the end of the world, then it may not be the end of the world. And, of course, uh, probably a little bit self-serving. Uh, right now, a great deal of the very short term in the market is handled by computers that read headlines, and that's all they do. So do they just want to go and run everybody out at the lows? Well, I think there's a good opportunity to believe that. Uh, I like to say uh, listening to the big men of Wall Street is kind of uh, like using your wife's the uh, uh, attorney boyfriend for your divorce. Probably not a fairly good idea to listen to him. And generally, I do just the opposite. Uh, other things going on, uh, our uh, sit rep uh, fanboy out there uh, has been sending me some stuff, and I did miss this, but uh, last uh, week, uh, a, a ETF did file for a Kramer ETF uh, to go opposite of what he does. Ah! You never know about that. Eh. Okay. Not uh, sure why everything keeps acting up, but it does. But uh, what did I do here? Uh, I'll do it anyway. Let's see what we have here. Okay, we'll do this and this, and then we'll do this. Bring me the head of the false prophet, Jim Cramer. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, a uh, Anyway, we're talking about Kathy Wood. Maybe they were going, trying to wash her out this morning. And uh, this, we had Cramer out here, too, uh, is always interesting, but... Uh, yeah, I'm not uh, not a big fan of his. I don't know how well a inverse Kramer ETF would do, but uh, eh, he's generally extremely wrong at the wrong time. I think that's probably the best way to say uh, over his history. And uh, he ran uh, two uh, hedge funds into bankruptcy only to be saved by his then-wife. Uh, and became, uh, of course, the dancing bear that he is today on CNBC. Uh, so what do we have? That's kind of it. Oh, we've got uh, Microsoft uh, was down a lot uh, stronger earlier in the day, uh, along with the uh, SMHs. So we'll, we'll see uh, how the end of the day comes. Uh, you need to close uh, somewhere about 185 or higher today. So we'll see. Uh, that you got some decent volume in the SMHs. Uh, again, I'm a little wary on a bond day where their bonds are closed of uh, putting too much uh, into uh, them breaking today. It seemed a little bit. We'll be back in a minute. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Free at one eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Internationally at seven two seven eight seven three seven six one eight. And uh, we come. <laughs> Yes, everything's not safe for work anymore. Uh, anyway, uh, had a few more people piling on. Uh, as we said, uh, interesting rumors and rumors about rumors coming out today. Denberry had a huge run up to 104.05 today. It's uh, about 98 or thereabouts. Uh, when we look at that, um, two different companies talking about buying them out and, of course, starting to see – uh, some of that uh, bleed off here in the afternoon, but uh, yeah, more rumors of uh, acquisitions in the energy space. So we'll keep an eye out on that. Uh, 36, uh, let's call it 36.15 on the S&P cash. Uh, as I said on the uh, first section, the volume was fairly light. We should probably, if we're breaking out the lows, uh, today doesn't mean we can't break them out tomorrow, but uh, if this was a regular day, I'd like to be seeing about eight and a half billion shares, maybe nine billion shares, right at this time uh, to get the kind of volume to blow out the lows. Uh, doing a little less than 6.2 billion shares right now is not that big. Of course, some of the sectors uh, probably more on. Uh, statements in China about what's going on with uh, uh, the chip business and, of course, uh, Friday's uh, Biden comments on more tariffs on China's semiconductor business and China being a little less than eloquent on how they were going to throw uh, the old proverbial monkey wrench in the gears. Uh, so you do have some decent volume. And it does look like you're breaking through some previous lows. Uh, but is it blowout volume so far? No. And again, I'll probably put uh, about half uh, of a signal on any signal I get today with a bond market, uh, uh, half the weight anyway, that I would get if the bond market was traditionally open that I have now. Again, I'm starting to think I smell a little bit of something and maybe it's in Denmark. 
if you get my Shakespeare references. Uh, too soon? Only, only 500 years later? Uh, too soon? Uh, okay, so that's part of it. Uh, oh, uh, Microsoft has its big new dog and pony. I've had somebody waiting for one of their new products, and it looks like it's coming out. Uh, they came down today on some fairly high volume. Um, only about half of what we saw on Friday, though, so far. 30, what's called 38 million shares on Friday, about 19 million so far. I don't know if uh, anything in the new products uh, will turn that around as much as anything else. Uh, to, 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 of course, um, we've got some big product rollouts over the next two weeks. It uh, doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot for NVIDIA, although uh, they will, I think it's tomorrow and Wednesday, um, their announced products will already start shipping. Um, you got some decent volume, but you're not holding the lows so far today. Probably should have some decent volume. Same thing with AMD announced products, starting to ship them. And the question is whether or not uh, or how well they're going to sell. Uh, they're going to sell out. Uh, in previous years, they would have sold out of their new products uh, before they ever got there. It looks like they may have product for a day or two before the first round are sold out for both AMD and NVIDIA. Uh, of course, uh, you have to separate great products uh, from a market that's uh, eh, a little manic, depressive, and we're kind of depressed at the moment. Um, not much going on in AMD, but very superior products. Uh, and I'm looking at building some new uh, PCs and uh, I've got th uh, probably five people right now that are interested in building new PCs uh, for trading, and they've been talking to me. But I think uh, in the next couple of weeks, probably going to be the best time to buy a computer that there will be in the next few years. Um, these new products are probably going to keep uh, the pressure for AMD and NVIDIA to get the old ones out the door at a fairly uh, decent price if you want to buy there's always a bull market somewhere and maybe it's just you buying a new pc in the coming weeks i'm not going to do it in the next couple of days but my guess is once these new products really start hitting the shelves over the next couple of weeks uh we're probably going to see the lows in the price uh, by the first of november uh then things will probably sort themselves out but uh yeah looks good um kind of interesting to see that uh even with uh, all the uh, angst and depression, and uh, yeah, every time you see somebody and uh, that uh, talks about the stock market, they've got uh, uh, what's that book? Uh, boy, I'll think about it now. Uh, so when all the uh, all the assassins carry, <laughs> I'm trying to remember now. Uh, not a fiddler in the the rye, catcher in the rye. Every, every time they catch some serial killer or, or assassin, they've always got a co copy of the catcher in the rye. And, uh, it's, of course, uh, all the conspiracy movies always have the CIA planting a copy of the catcher in the rye for those folks. But uh, you know what? You, you came into the lows for earnings. You had a nice bounce. Uh, you're down today on about half the volume. It's not as bad as, uh, I mean, it could be a lot worse. Let's, let's just say it that way. It could be a great deal worse. So we'll keep an eye on that. 877-927-6648. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, uh, okay. Got a couple more emails here. Um, yeah, SMH, uh, I would wait till the close. I wouldn't make a lot of prognostications before we see that. Like I said, uh, so far a very light day. And yeah, even with light volume, if you hang at the lows long enough, you'll eventually break through them. Uh, you really want to see these things take off uh, over the next couple of days if we do have a low in. Uh, if we don't, we just hang out around here. Just eventually one day we'll get up and it'll gap through to the bottom. So I'm not a big fan of uh, buying these, uh, hoping 
that will bounce up in the morning. I'd rather see it bounce up in the morning and then buy it if you're thinking higher. As I said, uh, options continue to be uh, semi-bullish, up to 380 on the uh, spies. We'll know a lot more on Wednesday when everybody goes delta neutral. Uh, but when we look in the spies, the last low at 357, which we got into today, had 154 million shares. We got, uh, well, less than 49 million. So we're doing about 35% of the volume of that low. And uh, a lot of times that's how you make nice lows. Just come back and test them and test them and test them. 877-927-6648. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, JDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, we come back here to the market. It's just uh, one of those days. And again, uh, there's two days when the bond market is closed, uh, why the equity market is up. And they're almost always light volume days. Uh, and it's uh, Columbus Day, as today is, and uh, Veterans Day in November. So don't be surprised uh, when this uh, same thing happens yet again next month. Uh, okay, we've got uh, other emails out here. What do we have? Okay. Uh, somebody asked me on Netflix, you're just going sideways at the moment. I don't see a whole lot out here. I'm not bullish on any of these. Uh, if Amazon had a bigger uh, percentage of their 
earnings come from uh, streaming movies and all that, I'd be more bearish on them too. Uh, you actually have a fairly good low coming back in uh, to the low on Amazon. That's September 23rd, uh, 112.06, 65 million shares. You got about 30 million as you got real close to that today. Uh, anytime I see a stock on 50% li lighter volume, I don't believe that it has to, you know, if you're within uh, half a percent as you are today, I don't believe it's got to come back and retest it. Um, I'm not a mega bull, but uh, you know, this kind of looks like it's just bouncing around from 112 to 1, probably 124, 125, a half, where that double gap is. You've got to get through 116 to 118. But, uh, you know, Christmas is coming, and there's a pretty good uh, correlation with it doing well into the end of the year. Okay, what else do we have here? Okay. We got that. Okay. So uh, anyway, I'm not. Uh, Amazon's uh, lost a billion dollars on that Lord of the Rings remake. Uh, Disney continues to. Uh, uh, <clears throat> what can I say and get away with it? Uh, all over the Star Wars franchise um, that they paid four and a half billion dollars for. Uh, I you just. I don't know how the CEO just can't fire everybody involved with the Star Wars franchise and some of the other stuff that they're doing. It's just horrifically bad. And, of course, now we know how bad these are doing because we've got tune-out times being published rather regularly now in the trades for Hollywood. So we know that people aren't watching or they're turning out, uh, or tuning out soon. And, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe they just tried to make too much stuff coming out of the pandemic and were stretched too thin for people doing anything good. Uh, but uh, there's four or five uh, properties that they spent $300 million on and more that are just terrifically bad and getting very bad reviews. The only thing I could see that on the horizon that does well for Disney is maybe the next season of Mandalorian uh, in which they've kept those folks away from it, although they uh, continue to circle it and try to torpedo it with very bad ideas. Um, maybe the shining star in what Disney does, but I don't think The Mandalorian comes in to the first quarter of next year for streaming. Of course, I don't think anything's going to change people uh, going to Disneyland or Disney World uh, and the theme park business. Uh, people want to take their kids, uh, even if it's expensive. So it's mostly on the whole streaming front as they move out of the theaters into the, the uh, uh, into uh, streaming. Uh, but uh, man, uh, everybody. Um, let me put it this way: everybody is doing rather poorly. And I don't think that there's anything else to say about it than that. Uh, 877-927-6648. And that's uh, got hit. Okay. Go back here. Uh, anybody have any uh, stocks in the den they want to look at? Uh, make sure and put your note in there. Uh, to, to, and just kind of hanging around here on the S&P. Let's take a look at that. Uh, 3624, again, the number 3636 is what you need for the close above today. Uh, and that would give you a, 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 a yet another test of the low. And it's been a long time. It's been probably, I, I'm going to say 2005 and six before we've seen, or since we've seen the repeated breakdowns, I think in March of 2009, we had one retest, and that was it, and the market took off as the Fed started putting a fire hose of cash to the market. Uh, I think we had one in, like, 2004 and five. Uh, even the uh, one after uh, 2001, the 9-11 event, uh, I think we only got one test back into October, and then we started moving again. So it's been, you know, before that, uh, the history of the market has been, um, beating out what they used to call beating out lows. You still see it in stocks a great deal more than uh, broad markets. 
Uh, but uh, at least so far today, I believe that's what we have. Let's go back and check uh, with uh, the volumes real quick. So a little less than six and a half billion shares. As I said, you really want to see 18 billion shares uh, to blow through the lows, and we just have not been getting it at these lows. Okay. Um, yeah, a question whether or not Apple uh, continues to be um, kind of the leverage that the market, the lever that everybody's putting on the market. Um, it was lower. It's back up today. Yeah. You're getting a fairly nice test today on this with, uh, what, 52 million shares going into 125. So, yeah, I think you've got some lows going into the, uh, uh, into the end of the year, and I think we've made our low. My thought would be that if we're going to have a big downturn, it will be after the first of the year. Uh, okay, first one is Big C. I'm unfamiliar with this one take a look uh, big commerce not familiar with it too much uh, you are testing a two and a half million share low that's the May 12th low um, $12.71 didn't quite get there but I don't think you have to um, you could buy this and just put a very tight stop on it you don't want it to close below 1271 but you've got one fourth of the volume that's generally a pretty good indication of a washout in the bottom. Uh, other things, uh, take a look at Chewy, C-H-W-Y, uh, for the fourth element. <laughs> I do like the movie, though, uh, the fifth element. Okay, um, well, it's still holding up and a very light volume, 36 bucks. Uh, let's see how much of a retracement this thing's done. Uh, so you got a 382 on it. Um, yeah, I think it's probably one of the better looking ones going forward. Uh, people are always willing money to spend money on their dogs. But uh, yeah, uh, nice no volume today. I don't know if I'd buy it today or wait till tomorrow. But if you open right in here and there's no volume, I think you'd put a stop in at 3410. And that would look really good. When we get back, we've got uh, some more uh, to, to, to okay, we'll go through that uh, in a minute. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. And we're back uh, 3625 on the S&P cash Dow's up 16 29312 Nasdaq's off 67 off uh, which is about six tenths of a percent off uh, after being down two percent on the day uh, Russell's off a uh, half a percent all of these of course off some fairly significant lows and of course uh, a lot of this is uh, some uh, hijinks uh, on a day where the market's fairly closed. Um, I wouldn't say one way or the other to read too much into it, but a good close above 3636 would be pretty good. Uh, all the Wyckoff style, um, original uh, Wyckoff types always said, take the volume the way that it's supposed to come uh, or the way that it comes. I'm not always uh, that same way. I always think that maybe there's a little bit uh, else going on but uh yeah that's all you can say uh eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight and uh see what else we have here we'll check in with the volume real quick but yeah not any better six point yeah you know, just you know you'd like to see volume start coming in as it comes back up um we've just had a day where there was a lot of volume as they ran the stops um, didn't get much, uh, of course, uh, all perpetrated by a comment from uh, Jamie Dimon on the end of the world, uh, at least for the market, being down another 20 percent. Uh, not a big fan of listening to the big men of Wall Street. Um, eh, their job is not to uh, find you, find a big wad of cash and shove it in your pants. Uh, that's not generally what they do. They generally try to find the big wad of cash in your pants and take it out. So not a big fan of listening to any of those goes. So let's take a look uh, real quick uh, at Den again. Of course, uh, earlier in the show, um, are you going to close above the previous high? Uh, this is for Jimmy. Uh, 93, uh, yeah, 93.95 is the August 23rd high with 2 million shares. Uh, you've broken through it. You've got uh, 3.6 million shares. So you got all the volume, and you're more than likely going to close over 94 bucks. So it is a valid breakout. Um, I'm not sure about the rumor mill, but uh, from what I heard, two different companies look like they're going after Denberry. So it'll probably hang up for at least three days, uh, whether those rumors are truthful or not. Uh, okay, we looked at that, looked at that. Uh, question to look at the IBB uh, from Ronald. We'll look. Okay. Um, as we talked before, uh, I think we talked last Wednesday about how this came right up to confluence uh, and it wasn't perfect confluence but it was fairly good as I say uh, these tend to be more like speed bumps the wider they get when they're very narrow they tend to be a wall uh, the high on this was 122.80 got to 
64 closed back in that confluence range and that is if you look at uh, the Fibonacci's from September 26 uh, to September 9th and then the one from September 26 uh, to the 134.89 high on August 11th. Um, you get uh, the 618 of one and the 382 of the other. And in this case, you got about a dollar. Um, I like it uh, when they're about half a percent, uh, but they tend to work up to about one uh, percent. And then they tend to be more of a congestion zone uh, than something that you can put a stop on a nickel on the other side of them. Uh, but certainly a nice uh, layout on there as far as IBB going up to its confluence and now pulling back. You don't have a lot of juice in this. Uh, you are basically got your 50% retracement almost to your 618 today. 117.29 would have been uh, the 618. And what did you get today for the low? Uh, 117.32. So you got within two cents of that. Uh, that would have been if you were feeling pretty froggy this morning, which I think would have been tough, even for me. I was willing to wait till the end of the day uh, to see how everything turns out, and still am. Um, this is not. Uh, this is a fairly light volume day, and they can still push it around. It will mean a great deal more to me tomorrow than it does today. Uh, but that's it. Okay, so that's that. Question on GLD. I uh, was looking fairly good. The question is whether or not um, we were looking at uh, this uh, as uh, just uh, everybody that parked uh, money in China for the week that they were off uh, coming in and selling it and trying to go back into some other stuff with your gap down. Of course, uh, not much different uh, with uh, the bonds being closed, too. Uh, could you have a little bit of shenanigans going on in this? Uh, but uh, that does get you uh, 154.87 was the 618 on that one. You got to 155.12. Uh, um, not a lot of volume for GLD, but of course, not a lot of volume for the market in general. Let's go back and we'll quickly look at the spy volume that we were talking about. So 154, 154 million shares uh, to 51 and a half so far. So yeah, there, you know, maybe you get volume tomorrow. You're not going to get it today on most of those. Uh, question from Sam to look at uh, to, to, to uh, work day. So we'll do that quick. Uh, to, 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 okay. Uh, oh, that is a nice test. Look at that. 146.54 on September 27th with 3.2 million shares with uh, 600,000 shares today. So, yeah, if we if today is some kind of low, we start moving up tomorrow, we're going to have a lot of uh, very light volume tests. And again, I'm not as big a fan as some uh, in the price and volume to say take the volume no matter the way it comes. Uh, I tend to weight things like uh, uh, Fridays into a three-day weekend about half as much as I would into a normal weekend. Same with this. But, man, you can't say that we had volume at the lows at least today. Now, maybe tomorrow, but uh, I, can't, uh, I can't say it's time to short uh, the farm. Okay. okay. Take a look at Microsoft. MSFT. Did we look at that? Eh. Well, you broke. Eh, you're in support. You went back to the September 2nd, 2020 high. That was 228.83. Got to 226.73 today. Volume's about, uh, what, half of what it was? Uh, a little more than half of what it was on Friday. Uh, you had uh, what's called 38 million shares on Friday. Uh, today you've got 20 and eh, 20 and a half, a little more. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a light volume today. So we'll be back in a minute. This 
Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we get ready to wrap up uh, the end of the show here, of course, uh, China markets uh, reopened now. Uh, the markets closed for Columbus Day. Um, we've got earnings coming out on uh, Thursday, really starting the earnings cycle yet again. Uh, that's with Delta Airlines, Walls Fargo, uh, Walgreen Boots Alliance, uh, Domino's Pizza, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor, and Fast and All. And then we get into Friday morning where we see the banks with uh, – J.P. Morgan, uh, UNH, uh, Citibank, Morgan Stanley, uh, and uh, PNC. So a lot of banks on Friday. We'll get a taste of that. Uh, Microsoft's got a launch of new products on Wednesday. Uh, as we said, uh, Delta Neutral on Wednesday, too, along with uh, uh, the Fed with an announcement. Uh, I think their beige book's out at 2 o'clock on Wednesday. So we've got a lot of stuff this week um, and probably a lot of chop to get through. Uh, I'm not going to weigh too heavy in, uh, and uh, bet the farm quite yet, but I think we've got the makings of a very good bottom in the short to midterm. And when I'm saying that, I'm saying that maybe through the end of the year. You never know what the market uh, is uh, collectively thinking. Um, yeah, do I see that we could have a real tough next year? Yeah, but maybe we've had a little bit too much now. 
maybe the Fed decides that uh, they've been letting uh, air out of the balloon just a little too fast. They're going to, uh, you know, maybe moderate it just enough to uh, maybe get back up. As I said, you know, probably the best, uh, more most bullish scenario is seeing some print around 4,100 on the S&P cash before the end of the year. And uh, that still would not negate a longer term uh, bearish market. But, uh, right now, I'm not particularly bearish. So when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible.